hi there, I didn't see you. We were just sitting around reading Tim O'Brien's Vietnam War story, The Things They Carried. I'm Miss Devani. I'm Miss Kawaja. I'm Miss Gallen. And we are the English 3 APIB team. And this is the book you're reading this summer. You'll need to get a copy of the book, mm -hmm. first and foremost. You can get it from one of us, English teachers. You could get it from the library, or you could buy it from Half Price Books or any bookstore in town. You can also read it as a Kindle book, or you can read it on your phone, if that's the way that you like to read. Um, we're going to walk you through the summer assignment, so before we begin, it would be a good idea to go to Anderson online and download or print a copy of the summer assignment or uh, get one from your sophomore English teacher. So once you have a copy of this, I'm going to walk you through uh, a few parts on the front page and then we'll kind of go through the summer assignment bit by bit. So to start with, why do we have a summer assignment? So the key to being a great reader is to read extensively and the key to being a great writer is exposure to great writing. This book has a lot of great writing in it. For example, Tim O'Brien writes, the war wasn't all terror and violence. Sometimes things could get almost sweet. Um, reading is not something that we want you to do just during the school year. Lifelong learners are also lifelong readers. Summer provides time to enjoy uninterrupted reading and allows students to time to ingest ideas prior to discussing and interpreting writing techniques in class. It also reinforces the skills students learned and keeps them in touch with great literature. One thing about when you do get a copy of the book, I would suggest that you try to find one that's free of annotations so that if your teacher asks to look at any of your annotations, um, we'll be able to tell that they're your own and not your older siblings or someone who sold their book to Half Price Books. So why have we selected this novel for you? It's a wonderful book, a great example of American literature. Um, the back of the book describes it as um, not stopping and changing minds and lives since it burst onto the literary scene. It is a groundbreaking meditation on war, memory, imagination, and the redemptive power of storytelling. What's nice about the format too is that it's made up of short stories. So um, it's really easy to maybe read a couple at a time while you're at the pool or before you go on a hike or while you're on an airplane traveling with your family. Some of the stories are short, some of them are longer. So it's very accessible and a great summer read. We recommend reading it as soon as summer starts instead of waiting till the last minute. Um, and yeah, that's that. That's why we chose it, because it's good. We'll walk you through the assignment a little bit right now. Um, while you're reading, this is again on the paper, so make sure that you, are, you have a copy in front of you. Um, what should you be looking for when you're reading? You should look for and possibly mark significant moments. Consider passages that reveal a truth about a character, the theme of the novel or life in general. Include a major change in the character, plot, or tone. Demonstrate the writer's craft. Consider major literary devices. Anything that strikes a chord in you or grabs your attention for whatever reason. So that's what you should be doing while you're reading. Yeah, so in junior APIB writing, we're often, in APIB English, we're often thinking about how the author crafts their language and how that impacts his purpose. So that's something that's really important for you to be thinking about while you're reading. So when and how will I be assessed? This is the big question, right? So before school starts, that means before the first day of school, you should have the following things done. Um, and Ms. Gallen will bring that up on the screen for you to see. So before the first day of school, you should have three charts with three thematic statements that follow directions and guidance and directions and guidance are on the next page in the example. So that means that you need to choose three chapters to write about. Um, for example, uh, you cannot choose chapter three, spin, because that's what the example is on. So you have to choose a chapter from the beginning, chapters one through eight, the middle, nine through 15, and the end, 16 through 22 of the book for your thematic statements and charts. Everything will be submitted to turnitin.com on the first day of school. So that means no cheating, that means no working with anyone else, um, no sharing quotes, no sharing of Google documents, no collaborative writing. Uh, the first day of school, your work's turned into turnitin.com, so it needs to be of your own thinking. And yeah. here's an example of the chart. So we don't necessarily think that this, the assignment part, uh, will, will, be, will take you a terribly long time. Um, we've actually kind of, uh, like made this assignment shorter than it has been in the past years, but we really, really, really want to make sure that you are reading the book 
and that all of the work that you turn in comes from your own brain. So I don't want to read any work that is not your own. So please, please, please do your own work. Essentially, I'll walk you through a little bit about what the chart should look like. Essentially, you're looking for devices. The device should be more than one word. So instead of just saying symbolism, you should say, for example, symbolism of checkers representing <coughs> different sides of war. Or instead of just saying simile, you say simile comparing boredom to a faucet. So as you're reading, you're going, as I mentioned before, you're marking literary devices. So you'll go back to a chapter and you'll find three prominent literary devices and you'll describe them. You'll provide the concrete detail where the literary device is located. You'll put proper MLA citation, O'Brien, and then the page number. Then the most important part is the commentary. This is two to three sentences minimum where you're describing the author's purpose, why the author wrote this simile or this example of symbolism the way that he did. Um, try to avoid summary. Try to make the literary device the prominent thing that you're talking about. Avoid characterization and avoid plot. There are also a lot of places, if you're someone who thinks that you need um, help figuring out literary devices, we have a lot of resources that you can use. Like we have lit terms, glossaries that you could borrow from us before you leave for the summer. There are resources on our websites, PowerPoints, Quizlets, that kind of thing. So if you need help with definitions of literary terms, um, you should come ask us before the end of the school year. We also, this is a side note, but we also all are um, adding fit sessions for if you have questions about the summer assignment. Yes, so look for fit sessions with one of us, Devaney, Kawaja, or Gallon, in the last couple weeks of school. So to review, right, you have three total charts. Each chart has a thematic statement written the way thematic statements should be formatted. Um, and there's a handout on the English department's website with a formula for writing thematic statements, if you're not familiar with that. So a thematic statement, three literary devices, the correct MLA citation, the commentary. So three total charts. Um, in addition to the charts, which are due the first day of school, this will serve as a rough draft for your major paper for the first six weeks, which will start pretty quickly. Um, so the better you do with this, the easier a time you'll have writing your major paper the first six weeks. You will also be assessed with quizzes and with a test over the things they carried. Let us know if you have any questions. Our emails are on this document. Um, they're also available on the Anderson online website. Also, see us for FIT sessions. And we look forward to meeting you next yes. year and hope you enjoy the book. Enjoy Go English. Yay. Yay.